All right. So have you ever met someone and you just know, oh, this is a person for life? Well, I'm bringing you one of those amazing women today. Cindy Trim is not just a minister globally, but I don't know if you knew this. She was a former senator in Bermuda, British American. She started her first business at eight. Like who does this, right? Kingdom people do this. And this kingdom Mm -hmm. woman is going to be coming to you today, talking about what it means to be unstoppable. Cindy, I am so grateful to hang out with you. I tell you, like, we have already had some fire ignited here just in talking for a few minutes. But tell me, like, let's just jump into it. Why Unstoppable? Why now? I saw that book and I'm like, yes, ma'am, somebody's reading my mail. Yes, yes. Firstly, thank you for having me. Um, I am appreciative. I think you're an answer to a prayer. There's a simple prayer that I pray every single morning and you become that answer. So I'm very grateful. Unstoppable was really birthed when I was thinking about giving back, giving back to the next generation of women in leadership, um, women who are charged with changing the world. And they are born to change the world, whether they're women like my mother who raised seven children in the midst of abject poverty. I was born in abject poverty and my father abandoned my mother, but she's my first superhero to raise seven functional members of society that are given back currently. Uh, to women that are decision makers on in the White House or uh, presidents of con- co- uh, companies and countries, or you know individuals that are just starting out, they're fresh out of 18, 19, 20, 20, 21, 22. And I look back at my life and said, okay, what did I need at 17? Because at 17, I knew I was born to change the world. I could articulate it and what was missing. And I wanted to use this book as a literary mentorship gift Mm. to the next women leaders, uh, changers, history makers, and those that are born to change the world. And I think it's just about every woman that is born to change the world. You know, I think you're right. I think we are all here for purpose, Mm -hmm. but I think sometimes we can become so deluded by the world that we forget. It's like, if we could just remember who we are and whose we are, that power can rise up in us and we can answer, like we are an answer to someone's prayer Yeah, and we all have a purpose out here. And I think the enemy's strategy is to get us to forget the power that we have. I mean, Ephesians 3.20 is... We can do exceedingly abundantly beyond anything we can think, hope, or imagine, but we forget us according to the power at work in us. Once we grab a hold of that, watch out, like watch out. Yeah. I remember talking, talking to a specific mother or it was the person who got the heart. Um, And he was saying to me, you know, all my life when I was younger, I laughed at, at individuals that had any kind of challenge when he was young, growing up. Then when he matured, you know, he grew out of it and he had a heart attack. And here was this man, you know, on a list waiting for a heart and the heart came and he cried as he was telling me the story. He said, you know, the person that gave me the heart was a young girl whose mother was saying, why did I have this child? Because, you know, she was mentally challenged, intellectually challenged. And she operated, she was uh, 18, operated at the age of a three-year-old. So the mother asked God, why, why me, why this child? So one day when her back was turned, the child, she had to supervise the child, kept eating bread and asphyxiated (sighs) and died. And the paramedics came and said, we can harvest her organs. And they harvest her organs. And one of the organs that they harvested was the heart, which was the heart that this young man received. And it was from someone when he was young, he would have made a joke of. And the mother visited him and cried, just laid on his chest and said, now I understand that the plan of God was much greater than my pain. 
And so I, I, you know, understand that a lot of times, even with women, we might have questions about our children, about our lives, how we were married, but we are literally unstoppable. And today her daughter's heart is still alive and thus she is alive. And I, I, I love that, you know, when it comes to being unstoppable, we look at our lives, we compare it with so many other people. But um, when we understand that each one of us, just like you said, we all have a purpose. And if we can look beyond the pain of living, we will be able to find the purpose. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, because, you know, Jesus even said in this world, you will have trouble. I think sometimes we want to put a period there where there's supposed to be a comma. Like we think, well, you know, this world, we're just going to have trouble. But Jesus said, take joy from the world. Like that's where we're supposed to live in that joy, in that finished work. Yeah. Like with, with a level of confidence. Yes. God did not make a mistake. Me growing up in abject poverty and Bermuda, I I grew up in Bermuda is known for its wealth. So here's this pocket of poverty. And I, I, I was born in that pocket of poverty, Yeah. even though you're surrounded by wealth, but I can see the wisdom of God. Because everything that I talk about, I've lived it, whether it's faith, faith in God, faith in yourself, whether it's salvation, whether it's trust in God, I've lived through all of it. You know, everything that I talk about, the only person that you can, that can stop you is you. So do not place a period where God has put a comma. Right. Keep going. And, and, you know, we're called, we just say to that mountain move and it will move, but most of the times we're the mountain. We are the mountain. Yes, yes. And, and we're like, we're like proclaiming everything against what we see as, you know, financial hardship and stress, anxiety and bad relationships. Like, no, no, we need to look at ourselves. Like, mm-hmm. let's get this straight. Right. Because we're, we're not supposed to conform to the pattern of this world. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And when we renew our mind, according to the word, all of a sudden everything changes. We realize, wait, as soon as I get this right, yeah, everything else is going to fall into place. You no, know, you're 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 making a point that I I think that we we can just pause for a moment and unpack, yeah. um, because propaganda is not more powerful than biblical principles. Okay, biblical we need to we need to talk some more about that because that yeah. is powerful. biblical principles are more powerful than propaganda. Yes. And we live in a world that is driven by propaganda. Yeah. This is how, you know, it's beyond just algorithms, right. you know, that, that is controlling the average individual algorithms and advertisement. Um, but it's the propaganda. And yeah. if you notice, it's just sound bites. And this is why, you know, we always talk about Jesus being the great, greatest mediator because he's more powerful than media. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And you're consuming more media than you are the word. Your anxiety is self-inflicted. Yeah. Because, you know, whoever controls your ears controls your destiny. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And if we so listen true. more to the word of God and we study the word of God, listening with your spirit, with your eyes, I always say, listen with your eyes. Yeah. Start yeah, yeah. reading the word of God. And um, that word of God should become your your life book of strategies. It is. I mean, yeah. it's the best selling book of all time. Yeah, it has to be doing something right. And even he says, "My word will not return to me void." So even like I want to encourage people where you're like, "Oh, the Bible's boring. I've tried it." No, get in it, meditate on it, and and ask God. Like I remember hearing one of my good friends, Kelly Copeland, she said, one day I just asked Jesus, she was at the end of a rope. She said, I just opened my Bible said, Jesus, can you just read it to me? And something about that, just that receptive spirit say, I'm just showing up. Yeah. Me your word, feed it to me. I'm passionate enough to meet you right where you are. And it's a book of human interest stories. I it's mean, fascinating it's book where, you know, you could look at yourself and, and, and see yourself in the unfolding of some of the stories. And then what is so beautiful and so different 
between every other book and the word of God is that the book is alive. It's, it's living. It's breathing. It's living. It's living. It changes every, yeah. every time you read it because you're reading it according to your inner man is reading the word and God's able to reveal something all the time. I don't know how many times I've read, you know, I'll, you know, read through the Bible or read a passage, the 61st time I read it, all of a sudden it's like, whoa, I see something I've never seen before. And it changes my life. You Mm -hmm. see different characters of God. Um, You see different personality and temperaments of Jesus. Like I remember reading one passage. I'm like, Jesus is kind of a gangster. Like he was, he was yeah. pretty much like, he was, like the, he he was a you. disruptive thinker. He was, he was like, oh, you going to leave too? Mm. Well, there's the door. Yeah. And he's a big, he was a big thinker. He yeah. was thinking about changing a village. <sighs> he was thinking about changing the world. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Stop. and an unstoppable <laughs> woman, an unstoppable woman, I think takes the limits off. Yeah. You well, look at that unstoppable woman who was for 12 years, she had an issue of blood and mm-hmm. she just decided, uh-uh, like no more. She was unstoppable. She basically risked her life to go out. She elbowed her way through the crowd. She's like, I, I don't care. I'm either going to do it or I'm going to die doing it, trying. And because of that, her touch of faith opened up the grace of God and Jesus didn't even realize like he took, he's like, who touched me? It was that power of an unstoppable woman that released the virtue that immediately healed that woman. And I am saying whatever you're lacking today, it one touch of that grace, boom. If you're unstoppable, it'll change your life. I love what you're saying because you're talking about the power of intention. Yes, ma'am. Which of you intending to build, which of you intending to uh, uh, build and battle? And I think, you know, a lot of times we have plan A, plan B, plan C, D, E, F, and there's so much confusion. But if you can just intend to do something, this is what I'm going to intend to do. We have end your year strong coming up and how something ends is how something begins. We were talking earlier about 2024, the year of the open door, but four is also a number that is pointing to to women. Yes. So 2024, I think, is an opportunity for women to really rise yeah. and contribute to pushing, continue to contribute to pushing humanity for, forward. And an open door is an opportunity. And opportunities come disguised. It disguised as uh, as adversity, it comes disguised as problems, it comes disguised as crises, it comes to describe, um, disguise. And yeah. open door is not always obvious. Yeah. And I, I believe that right in the midst of our, our, tr- our challenges, our struggles, right in the midst of our problems, whether it's within our personal lives or our family's life, or even in our community or country, there's gonna be an opportunity for women, number one, to come together. So you're gonna see a coming together of individuals that are called to work together. And then number two, it's gonna be major opportunities where um, countries and companies will have to turn to women. Um, They have oppressed or overlooked or ostracized. And we're gonna bring our feminine energy of nurturing and creating. And we're gonna bring that to the table. Women always ask me, you know, are men intimidated by you? And I said, absolutely not. I've never met a man that was intimidated by my strength or intelligence. Right, right. And um, what, what the world needs, the world is so desperate that they need alpha women. Yes. And, and alpha woman has nothing to do with personality. Mother Teresa was an alpha, alpha woman and she was kind and she was gentle. Deborah was yeah. an alpha woman. Proverbs 31, Sarah was an alpha woman. She doubted herself and yeah. she doubted God, but yet God used her. Eve was an alpha woman. And you look at all these amazing um, examples yeah. of alpha 
women. And I think once a woman stops looking at her personality, stops looking at what she has or she doesn't have, it's not based on uh, education, it's not based on intelligence, you cannot measure the anointing of God and what the anointing of God will do through us. And if God could use a donkey and a crow, <laughs> that means God could use any one of us. And he uses us based on what he has planned for us in our future and not what we have done in our past. And our past has nothing new to say to us. So we might as well listen to the calling that God has on our life for our future and, go, and go there and go there. Just go, go there. there. Just go. Forgetting the things which are behind. Right, right. And and you said it earlier, like it's that confidence mm -hmm. that we have to have and not just have at one time, but we it says in the Bible, don't throw away your confidence. We have to keep it. I think that's that unstoppable knowing that we are called for this season. Like, I think you feel it. I feel it. There is a, um, there is a desperation on this planet for the kingdom of God. It is aching to see the miraculous, which is only through the grace of God. And I think women yeah. are the ones who need to rise up as that vessel, as that creative power. Yeah. And, to, and when we're looking, just like you said, looking back at the past, it doesn't change. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You're not determined by that. It has nothing to do with you. It's yeah. that's none of your business. Yes. Move forward. God has something for you. Move forward to that. And don't like, there is no price so great. It is so worth that. And there's always a cost. There's a cost to do it. And there's a cost to not do it either yeah. way you're going to pay. Yeah. You know, I, I, um, one of the things the Lord said to me because so, so many women are struggling right now. Yeah. Um, and he said this, he said, okay, uh, problems introduce you to my personhood and principles. Mm. Adversity introduces you to yourself. Mm. So the next best version of yourself. And then I asked God, well, what is self? And God said to me, self is my sanctuary. Ooh. So if when you find out who you are, you automatically meet God. Because yes. self, self is the sanctuary of God. It is. And going through that adversity, none of us would choose it. But I'm telling you, Cindy, there is treasure there that cannot be mined wow. outside yes. of the experience. Yes. You got to go through it to yes. get to it. And yes. I remember this, my, I'm so close to my mama and she passed in December. Oh, I can't tell you that like it immobilized me and I want, I didn't want that pain and God always showed up and he said, there's purpose here. There's purpose here. So those women who are feeling adversity, what if it's helping you develop the skill that will be required to uphold the platform he's calling you to, is mm -hmm. it worth it then? Like mm -hmm. we, we have a choice. We go, we go into the furnace or we say, God's not big enough to withstand this. You know, and a lot of times I think we're we're deceived. There's a lot of deception that goes on to make us feel as if everyone else's life is working. Everyone oh. else's marriage is working. Everyone else's finances is working. Yeah. But your finances and your marriage and you take on the role of a victim. But life is happening to all of us. Yeah. But equally, we happen to life. Yeah. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And when I change my narrative, I change my destiny. Mm. Think of, I don't think of, I mean, you know, when I think back at the struggle of growing up in, ad, in, in, in abject poverty, I changed my narrative. Poverty was my gift yeah, because it introduced me to a businesswoman. Poverty was my gift because it introduced me to a best-selling author. Poverty was my gift because it introduced me to not only a business uh, um, owner, but it introduced me to a money-making, destiny-altering machine. Nice. And that's my mind. So as a woman thinketh, as a man thinketh in his own heart, so is he. 
So um, I decided that I believe scripture. I'm not a victim. Right. I'm a victor. I'm more than a conqueror. Yes, because so he, he is who he says he is or he's not nothing. And, and nothing is wasted. All things work together for good. Yeah. You know, yeah. they have that love God. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of people tell me stories, oh, you don't understand. And I then start with, well, which part of my life would you like for right. me to share with you? And right. within one minute of me sharing, I can have, hold you in tears. I could bring you to tears but I choose not to. Right. I'm not a victim of circumstances. Right. You know, and it happened to you. It happened. And we're not a product. Here, here's the sound bite. You are not a product of circumstances. Once you mature, you are the creator of it. And if you're in a circumstance that you don't like, decide where you want to be and become a co-creator because you plus God is unstoppable, unbreakable, unmovable, you plus God. And it may take a while. It took me years to become a best-selling author. It took me years to break the spirit of poverty from off of me, literally years. Yeah. But, I, but, but by the inch is a cinch. You cannot stop. You know, you've got to create habits. A habit starts with a discipline. Mm -hmm. So you got to Discipline your mind. I have it put something in autopilot, right? Right, it's right. So right. if you want to put your success, your happiness, your joy, it starts with discipline. Paul said, I beat my body into subjection. And then he also says, whatsoever things are true and honest and just and praiseworthy, a good report. Discipline your mind to think on these things until it becomes a habit. And whatever becomes a habit, it can become a lifestyle. And that whatever is, lifestyle, you can perpetuate it as a destiny. That is so true. And I, I think the same thing. I look back at my childhood and there were times, I mean, if we didn't grow it in the garden, we didn't need it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there was like every day it was white rice and squash and green beans. And, and I remember one time there was no food. And when I say no food, there's no food. And I remember seeing my mama use faith to create a meal. And she said, God, we need food. And I'm believing for food, setting the table, getting ready. And my sister was working at Chick-fil-A. I'll never forget this. She has a call. She's like, mama, the freezer broke at Chick-fil-A. I need to bring home all the chicken. <laughs> and I remember thinking faith works. May computers break down. May refrigerators break down. <laughs> And may you be the recipient of it. Yes. And it will happen. It will can happen. Can I give you an example? Yes. I, I, on uh, a couple of days ago, I was just in the store, right? And every day I prayed this simple prayer about computers breaking down and things like that. I, I had no intentions of buying. I walked by this, um, the purses. Right. And, and I said, how much is that purse? And they said, oh, it's $1,250. And I said, can I see that one? And it pulled it out and someone had misput $125. So then she said, oh, this is absolutely wrong. And I said, oh, I know my consumer rights. She said, well, let me just ask my manager. The manager wasn't there. So she said, I got to take it to the register. She keyed it in. Someone keyed in a $1,250 bag, and it was keyed in to $125. And my stomach turned. I found $125. I bought yes, it. And rushed out of the store, and it was a high end store. I am decreeing that computers are going to break down. I'm decreeing and declaring when it's spitting it out, it's saying that you are debt free. You, oh no. Yes. What? So I'm decreeing that in your favor, God is going to supernaturally intervene so that whatever you lack, it's going to be supplied. Whether it's a job, whether it's money, I can go on and on and on and on. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I got to call attention to something you said. Y'all listen, just, just hold up a second. Listen to what Cindy said. She said, I know my consumer rights. I'm asking you right now, do you know your kingdom rights? Do you know your kingdom rights as a child of God? What you are allowed to have, what you can call in. He said, 
The whole heavens are his, but the earth he has given to the children of men. That is us. It's me and you. Why aren't we using our kingdom rights to go out there and expand the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven? Mic drop. Mic drop. It is time to be unstoppable. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What is holding you back? Like, what is holding you back? Because you're saying whatever's holding you back, you are saying this thing, this event, this circumstance is greater than God. And I just don't believe that's true. Neither do I. Oh, girl, it is time. With God, nothing is impossible. Nothing. And therefore, you're unstoppable. Yeah. All things are possible with God. Amen. Amen. So good. Cindy, it has been such a beautiful pleasure hanging out with you today where can people get more of you because they're hungry for you now sister yeah yeah trim international cindy trim on all of the um platforms everything is blue chat and if we will put low all number the if it's notes, a low number that's not me but okay. if the numbers are high that's me look in the show notes we're going to put all the information grab hold of this book make sure you're following cindy she is a blessing to this world. Thank you so much, Cindy. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Be blessed like crazy.